Welcome back, everybody, to the Living Jewishly podcast. Previously, we learned how to wake up as a Jew and then how to wash hands Jewishly. And today, we are going to explore the halacha, the Jewish law of how to get dressed, the dignity of you. The Torah tells us, walk modestly with Hashem. This teaches us to conduct ourselves modestly. Most commentaries define modesty as acting in a dignified manner and limiting loud attention-calling behavior. While dressing and undressing to limit exposure of the body, even in private, remembering that Hashem sees us at all times and that modesty brings humility. The black color is one of humility and modesty. One should exercise caution of clothes that are overly flashy and draw too much attention as they convey arrogance, haughtiness, and immodesty. An interesting side note that if you ever go to a show or to a concert, an opera, you'll notice that all of the staff who are working the stage and taking the mics, putting them on, taking them off, and whatever it is, they're always wearing black because black calls the least amount of attention. And this is what the halacha tells us, is that we don't want to be attention callers. We don't want to be people who are constantly calling attention towards ourselves. That is a notion of immodesty. A Jew should always dress humbly and reflect modesty and distinguish himself from the ways of the non-Jews. This is we learn from the Torah directly in Leviticus 20, verse 26, including lifestyle, fashion, clothes, haircut, hairstyles, speech, the way in which we talk should always be distinguished from the non-Jews. However, if someone is in a specific industry, like a doctor who wears a doctor's coat, that's fine. That's the uniform that's required. That's okay for us to be like the non-Jews. But in every other way, we should distinguish ourselves. Our mission is to be unique and to be different and not to shy away from it. When we talk about modesty, it's about not calling attention, not being a poster where everyone can look at us. One should always use moderation in clothing by avoiding luxurious and expensive attention-calling clothes. One shouldn't wear cheap, inferior, or dirty clothes either. Buying shoes should be a great priority even to sell the beams of one's house for it. It's important for one to be dressed clothed appropriately. Since the right side always takes precedence over the left, we know the temple service, uh, the Kohen, and other mitzvahs require us to always use our right side. Kabbalistically, our sages teach us that the right side is the side of kindness, the left side is the side of judgment, and you always want to attribute kindness in our life. Therefore, when one dresses, the right side always takes precedence. One should dress the right side first, except when tying where left goes first, like with tefillin. We tie the tefillin on our left hand. We tie our left shoe, and we'll see this further in a minute. One should undress the left side first, because that would be an honor to the right side. When putting on shoes, we put on the right shoe, we put on the left shoe, we tie the left shoe, and then we tie the right shoe. One should always prioritize bathing the right side first as well. Again, the idea here is a lightning bolt is not going to strike you if you did the left side first. And there's no need for one to get anxious about, I can't believe I made such a mistake. I can't believe. It's fine. The idea is in the deep Kabbalistic roots, we're trying to shower ourselves constantly with the blessing of kindness. And that's why we give precedence to the right A Kohen, who's a lefty, by the way, cannot serve in the temple. Only a righty. Avoid putting on two garments at a time. For for example, an undergarment and a shirt together. Uh, You know, if you're putting on an undershirt and a t-shirt together, one garment at a time. Putting on two at a time is an omen that leads to forgetfulness. A man should not walk eight feet or say words of holiness without a head covering, a yarmulke. Interesting, 
many people don't know this, that the word yamaka comes from two words in Hebrew. Yare malka, fear of heaven. And the yamaka is supposed to serve as a constant reminder that right above us is our God, creator of heaven and earth, and we should have a consciousness of God's presence constantly in our day. It is proper to educate little children to this practice as well. The Talmud relates a story that one of the Tanaic sages, before he was born, his pregnant mother had a dream that her child was going to be, that was she was pregnant with, was going to be a thief. So she went to one of the rabbis and she says, Rabbi, how do I make sure that my son doesn't grow up to be a, to be a thief? The rabbi said, make sure that from the minute he's born, he always has a head covering. And with that head covering, he will have the presence of God upon him and he will avoid falling into the trap of thievery. Sure enough, at one point he was sitting, this son, who was a great Tanaic sage, was sitting under a tree, a date tree, and a wind blew his yarmulke off his head. And at that moment... He looks up at the dates. He says, wow, they look so delicious. And he grabs a date, which was not his, and took a bite in it into the the date that was not his. And our sages teach us from this the importance of always being conscious and cognizant of the presence of Hashem. The yarmulke is a tremendous protector for this reminder. Nowadays, even while sitting or standing in place, it is appropriate to have a head covering. Many have the practice to wear a head covering even during sleep, and our sages say that this is proper. One should avoid walking with arrogance with an erect posture, outstretched neck. It is also praiseworthy to avoid the opposite extreme of being too humbled, having a hunchback, and and you know being too humble is not either. The underlying principle in Judaism is balance. No extreme is ever really welcome. Not an extreme of a lavish, too lavish of a lifestyle, and not an extreme of too humble of a lifestyle. It needs to be a balance. It is improper and undignified to run in public or to walk in a wild, unrestrained manner. Our sages call this a psiagasa, which is a, a very wild stride. That doesn't mean that one should not jog and do exercise or walk on the bayou and do what's necessary to preserve their health. But there's a way to do it that is appropriate. And that's the encouragement of our sages is to always do things in a dignified fashion. You're a representative of the Almighty and we should always carry ourselves with that recognition. Comport yourself with dignity because the way in which one walks and talks tells of who they are. The way you talk, ish kafi mehalalo, King Solomon tells us in Proverbs, the what, what you praise is what you are. You praise good, you are good. You praise bad, God forbid that could be the definition of who you are. Our sages teach that for health reasons, one should avoid walking between two dogs or pigs. Our sages tell us that they carry diseases, they carry illnesses, and we can uh, we can be infected by that, and therefore one should avoid walking between either of those animals. Our sages teach that for spiritual reasons, a man should avoid walking between two women, and a woman should avoid walking between two men. This is considered immodest and also leads to forgetfulness, like we mentioned previously. Our sages teach that if a man has no other choice, he can hold onto his tzitzis when walking between two women. But I think it's clear that for spiritual reasons, it's very important to take notice and to avoid walking between two people of the opposite gender. The Torah isn't oblivious to the reality of attraction and uh, that one may be overcome with desire and therefore to stay away from things that could pull us away. That concludes our lesson in the dignity of you, how to get dressed Jewishly. And my dear friends listening online, I invite you to email me at awolbe at torchweb.org, awolbe at torchweb.org. I look forward to hearing from you. 
I welcome your comments, your questions, and any concerns you might have. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to next week.